Brother standing up right there. It's not by chance that you came tonight. Glory to God. The Lord says that he brought you here for a purpose. God's got a touch for you tonight. And it's going to come at a moment when you least expect it. So you be attentive to the Spirit of God. Glory to God. That took something out of me this morning when I prayed for the two sisters back there. Brother Rondi, I've pastored three churches, as I've said, in the past few weeks that I've been here. But you know, I've never sit in a place where I felt the anointing of God so strong as I have felt since I've been here. Glory to God. I know Sister Ann myself. Uh, and I've been in the way, not in the way, but I've been in... So I've been saved for 46 years uh, and been on the field most of the time of those 46 years. Uh, I didn't have time to sit down, Sister Christine, and, and be mentored up under someone. Uh, I was immediately thrown on the battlefield, uh, going into nursing homes, uh, going into missionary field, uh, going into the evangelistic field, uh, preaching on the streets, uh, preaching in the nursing homes. Uh, glory to God, and if I had it to do over again, I would do it all over again, because not one time, glory to God, hallelujah, have I ever been blessed as much as I've been blessed, and I love to preach, Brother Alvin, but you know, glory to God, my greatest joy comes, Brother Rodney, is when God uses me one-on-one -on -one with an individual, glory to God, and I can get close and personal with them, brother, glory to God and I can read your mail sister. Glory to God. Why? It's because my heart is toward God, sister Tiny. Glory to God. My days are spent in prayer and in fasting and in studying his word. I don't have time for the world no more. I don't have time for the things of the world. You might look at me and say I'm a strange person. Well I am sister Maxine. Glory to God that I've even got family members. Brother Rodney Glory to God, because you know why? I'm a fanatic for Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God, I love that glory, baby. Hallelujah. I was raised up old time in Pentecostal. And I ain't going there. Because y'all know what that partakes of. The long hair, the long sleeve, no makeup, no jewelry. I come out of that, but I didn't come out from under the convictions. Wow. Oh, yeah. Amen. Who my father is. Yeah. Sister Christine said something this morning that has stuck with me all day long. And I'm going to add a little bit to it tonight. She said that God knew her before she was ever formed in her mother's womb. But you know, Sister Christine, my Bible teaches me. He knew me from the foundation of the earth. Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. He knew me when he was hanging on that cross. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know my heart's desire. God has put it in me. I may not even get into the word tonight, but it don't matter. Glory to God. God's, I tell you what, I enjoyed that singing. I felt like I was in the old time in church this morning. I love that kind of thing. You know that <laughs> makes you get emotional. And I done got out of the emotionalism stage in my life. <laughs> Uh, but you know, a lot of young people, they still like that emotionalism stuff. Yeah. But I don't. I'm more saddled than had to because I'm an old lady now. <laughs> I can't run the aisles no more, and I can't hoop and holler and jump up and down and shout like I used to when I was a young woman. But, you know, I still get happy inside. Ah. But, you know, praise God. I thank God for where he brought me from. Yeah. Yeah. I thank him that he gave me a life to live for him. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I've got four brothers and a sister. You know, glory to God, and I'm the littlest one out of all of them. They all are high, taller than I am and bigger than I am. And I took after my mama. I'm the run of the family. But I was also the black sheep of the family. Glory to God, you know, but I don't regret it. 
I don't regret it because my daddy's had his hand on my life even from my mother's womb, yeah. from the foundation of the earth, and I was on his mind when he was on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like I said, I love to preach. I must, I pastor three churches. I love people. And you know, it takes a mother's heart to pastor a church. Yeah. You know, I know men are... Most men are preachers, but if you ain't got a mother's heart, you don't know how to pastor a church. Because oh, it takes a mother's heart to pastor a church. Because yeah. you got to have compassion. Yeah. My son yeah. told me, he said, you know, he said, you need to pray. My son, he, he stays on me all the time about praying. He said, Mom, you might need to pray. God might be trying to change you. I said, son, I'm 66 years old. And if God wanted to change me, he would have done it a long time ago. And he said, certain things he'll get on to me about, so you need to pray. God might be trying to do so and so. He might as well have given up, Sister Christine, because God don't show them to me. I ain't going to receive it. Glory to God. But like I said, little sister, that was my greatest joy this morning. That's where I get my fulfillment. I don't get my fulfillment out of cigarettes. I don't get my fulfillment out of booze. I don't get my fulfillment out of drugs. I don't get my fulfillment at Walmarts or, or Kmarts or Belks or uh, any place like that. I don't get my fulfillment going to the amusement parks of the world. I'm too old for that anymore. Glory to God, I get my fulfillment when God shows me something about someone like you did Brother Alvin that night. I, I thought that to the nail, Brother Alvin. I said, Lord, I'll just go home and pray for Brother Alvin. God says, no, you won't. And I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Because, you know, my flesh wanted to do it when I got home because I was ready to go home. But God said, you got to pray for Brother Alvin. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to put it on Sister Ann. Let Sister Ann do it. <laughs> and then uh, I tried to put it on Sister Ann. But she said, no, you come on up. I know you can do it. Okay, I went ahead and done it. You know, I said, Lord. You know, you didn't give it to us day and today. You didn't. You gave it to me today, oh, and you didn't mean for me to do it when I got home, because I might have would have forgotten. Yeah. But you know what? That's my greatest desire: yeah. is to obey God oh, and to do His will. Oh, and you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I didn't know I was supposed to preach tonight when I saw this, Brother Rodney. I told us I love calling you Brother Rodney, so you might as well get used to being Brother Rodney because I can't get Rodney down south. <laughs> but anyway, I was in prayer. And like I know, God shows me things in the spirit. I have dreams and visions. And God teaches me in his word things. And, and uh, when I was in prayer, before Brother Raymond called me, I saw, I saw myself sitting on this chair right here. And I was teeth talking. And over here on the side, I caught a vision. And I saw something dark. And all of a sudden, the, the words came to me, spirit of redemption. And I said, whoa, well, wait a minute. What does that mean? God, I know redemption. There's a gift of redemption because you paid the price. You redeemed us at Calvary. Yeah. But that wasn't a spirit. I said, Lord, what does spirit of redemption mean? And I immediately got up when I got through praying, and I went and got on my computer and uh, my cell phone, one or the other, and I looked up spirit of redemption. Oh, well, people we know, and so Stan knows, and I know what's going on in the camp. Hey. Spirit of redemption is warcraft. Mm -hmm. It's a game. Witchcraft. Oh. Witchcraft. See, the devil <laughs> thinks he's hid, but he ain't hid. He don't know that pastor's anointed like she is because he ain't smart enough to realize it. And he don't realize that I was raised up under a deliverance ministry that taught me how about the gift of deliverance, casting out demons. Recognize them. And I remember a lady, and I won't call her no names because some of you may know her. But years ago, when I was a young woman, she told me, she said, Sister Marianne, if you ever recognize the devil, how he's coming, 
The battle's over halfway won. And I said, thank you, God. Victory's on the way. Because I done seen him, done recognized him. I bind him and I put him back in the pit where he came from. Glory to God. Witchcraft don't have no place in the house of God. Now, he's got a seat in the synagogue, but he ain't got no place in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I don't play with the devil. I don't play with him. I know how to come against him. I know. I, let me tell you something. I come up against the Grim Reaper, seeing him face to face. And you talking about fear. Fear gripped me when I seen it, but I didn't back up because I knew he was coming after us uh, after a life. And you can't back up when you come to run against things like that. Yeah. Glory to God. you got to stand your territory. Uh -huh. God knew what he was doing when he formed me in my mother's womb. Sister, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because all of my life, from a little girl, witches have followed me. My God. I've seen them in windows. I've seen them in dreams. I've seen, seen them in the mountains doing their root work and stuff. Uh -huh. See, I know about root working too, so all right, glory to God. Don't let me let me tell you one thing. I used to go to black churches too. I worship with them just as I can the white folks. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been at the black churches at twelve and one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I know them them folks they like they move with the root working stuff. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. They don't bother me. Glory to God, hallelujah, I'll call you out right quick if God shows me there's something in your life that ain't kosher. You better believe I'm going to call you out. And I'm not going to do it in front of the church folks. I'm going to call you out to the side so you need to pray. You're letting something deceive you. You're meddling in something you ain't got no business meddling in because it'll take you to hell. It'll take you to hell. I love the Lord tonight. I praise him. I thank him for all that he means to me. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else could have been up here tonight doing this. But you know, if my pastor, hallelujah, seen fit that I could do it, I want to uh, I want to bless her in obedience. Glory to God. You know, Jeremiah 29, 10, 11, and 12 talks about, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Amen. I've been pondering on that all day too, Brother King. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. He didn't say, I know the thought. He said, I know the thoughts. So I'm always in his mind. I'm always on his mind. I ain't got no companion, so I ain't always on their mind. If I did have one, they'd probably want to throw me out the door. But praise God, I'm always on my daddy's mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Yeah. Thoughts of a future and a hope. Yeah. Thoughts to prosper you and to do you good yeah. and not to bring evil to you. Yeah. Glory to God. He knows every one of us. Yeah. He's thinking about you tonight, sister. Oh. Glory to God. He's thinking about you, Brother Rodney. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's thinking about every one of us. And he knows the plan. That's what thoughts means. He said, I know the plan, Sister Maxine, that I got for you. And that's a plan to prosper you and to do you good and to lead you and guide you in the path that I've called you in. Glory to God, I didn't save you to sit on the pew. I didn't save you, glory to God, to, to not do anything. But I saved you for a purpose. Glory to God in that purpose. Hallelujah. You might not know what it is. Glory to God, you might not see, have seen the plans. Glory to God, but he don't remember. Reveal them to us, Brother Allen, till it's the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know I done talked a few minutes and I give out a breath pretty quick. Glory to God, but I want to talk to you. I want to tell you a story tonight. You're going to find this story in Mark, and you're going to find it also in John. Glory to God when Jesus, I'll tell you where the scriptures say it. And, the, and my message tonight is, you follow me. Yeah. You follow me. Yeah. Not me. You follow Jesus. Yeah. God gave me this weeks ago. And when I asked the Lord yesterday what he wanted me to minister on, he brought this back up to me so quick. Ah. And I said, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. But it's found. Hallelujah. In Mark. Glory to 
glory to God, 1 and 17. Now, I'm not going to try to read all of my notes because I'll keep you here at 9 o'clock if I did. Hallelujah, because I'm a journaler. I love to journal. Glory to God. But when Jesus began his ministry, glory to God, the Bible says he passed by Simon Peter and Andrew. And we know that Simon Peter and Andrew were fishermen by trade. Glory to God. And when Jesus was walking down the shore, glory to God, he came upon Simon and Peter and Andrew. Glory to God. And he said, told him, he said, come, follow me. Yeah. That was the first words he spoke Amen. when he called his first two disciples. Yeah. Come, follow me. Oh, yeah. And we all know the lie. I'm going to teach you on Peter tonight. I love to teach better than I do preaching. Glory to God. Let me take my shoes off because I get overbalanced. But um, when he called Peter, glory to God, Jesus knew that Peter would fail him. Yeah. Jesus knew that Peter would stumble oftentimes, brother, riding it down the way. Yeah. Even though he was with him for three and a half years, glory to God, set up under his teachings every day, saw deliverance, saw healing, glory to God, hallelujah, saw miracles, yeah. glory to God, Peter still stumbled. Oh, yeah. Now, he didn't fail. You go back and you study it out. Peter never failed God. Peter stumbled. Yeah. We stumble every day we live. We stumble some way, somehow in our life every day, whether we acknowledge it or not. And if you got the Holy Ghost, glory to God, living inside of you, He going to prick you and let you know you've done something wrong. He does me that way every day I live. Brother Raymond said I'm the most repentant person he ever met. <laughs> he gets on to me saying, you know, we, I've been knowing Brother Raymond for several years, and, and we're like this. We're kindred spirits. And he sharpens me and I sharpen him. Yeah. And I said, I told him, I said, we're like iron sharpening iron. Yeah. And sometimes it hurts, don't it, Brother Raymond? Yeah. More often than not, glory to God. But Peter uh, stumbled many times yeah. on the way in the journey when he was walking with Jesus. Oh. Glory to God. But there came a time, oh. hallelujah, glory to God, that when uh, Peter was uh, with Jesus there in John. Glory to God, hallelujah, in the 21st chapter. Let's go there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I've got it wrote down, so, but if you want to read it, you can read it with me. And this was when uh, Jesus and the disciples, glory to God, were there in that place, hallelujah, and all of a sudden, Peter spoke, uh, yeah, Peter spoke up and said, Jesus replied. Well, Peter had asked him. He said, uh, well, let's go back and read it. Glory to God. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to John 21. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? <clears throat> I can vouch for Pastor because just a little that I did this morning of the Spirit using me, I went home and I was slap drained. You know, uh, and she stands up and preaches her heart out. She's two years older than I am. She preaches her heart out Sunday morning and Sunday night. And praise for people too, Brother Alvin. <clears throat> and it takes something out of you. Now when we were younger, it didn't bother us that much. But as we get older, the anointing drains you. Because it's very powerful. It is very powerful. When you get under that anointing, especially for healing like the sister got this morning, Sister, I felt the virtue go out of me. I felt that virtue go out of me. When it goes out of me, it leaves me as limp as a dish rag. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
and it takes something out of you and you're not no good for at least a day or two after that yeah. because your body has to recoup, yeah. you know. But praise God, Brother Buddy, I wouldn't drink it for nothing oh, in the world. Hallelujah. It's like I told God, and I tell him all the time, Father, till the last breath leaves my body, you use me for your glory. If I can help my brother and sister in need, you use me. You use me. My heart is so toward God's people. You know, I, I told the Lord this afternoon, and then I'll get back into the Word. I told the Lord this afternoon, hey, Sister Patricia, it's good to see you. Glory to God. I, I told him, I said, Lord, I know that this is never, it's nothing that has ever been done, and, and I know it's not scriptural, but I said, God, if I could, Brother Alvin, I would that God would put me at the gates of hell <coughs> and give me the authority, Brother Rodney, to turn everybody around when they got, come to the gate and say, please don't go there. Please, you don't want to go there. And I said, Lord, I know that's not possible. That's not scriptural. That's just a thought of my mind. But I got children. I got grandchildren. And I've got great grandchildren. I've got brothers. I've got a sister that's dying with cancer. I've got nieces, nephews. I've got neighbors, Christine. I've got a community that I live in. I got a county. I got a city. I got a state. I got a nation. As I live in the world. Glory to God. And you know my prayer so often times, and God will give you the desire of his heart. My daughter can tell you, you know, the things that's happened to me in the last few weeks when a sinner will come to your door with a pack of souse meat and tell you that the Lord told them to go buy that for you. You know your daddy loves you. I know my daddy loves me. She knows I love souse meat. And she said that and she's a sinner. She said the Lord spoke and told her to go buy me a pack of souse meat. She didn't know that she answered prayer. Hallelujah, because I had asked, told the Lord when I came by Easy Shop one day, I said, Lord, I'd love to stop and get me some souse meat, but I'll just go on home. I'll just go on home. God already had the plan. God didn't, people don't know. It ain't the big things, Brother Rodney, that blesses me. It's the little things like toilet paper and butter and bananas. I can name several things that I pray for. I, I go around all the time talking to my daddy. And I say all the other week, I said, Lord, I'm just going to be out of toilet paper. I'll get some when, you know, when my check comes in. Well, bless God, somebody brought me some, and I didn't even ask them for it. I told Tony Ann one day, I said, well, you know, when my food stamps come in, I'm going to get some butter because we're bad out. Well, that week I was, I didn't go get, I didn't get one thing of butter. I got three things of butter. And the next week I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I'd like to have a banana. Well, my friend comes, she brought me two more batches. I didn't tell her. Yeah. You know what serving God to do? Ah. Debbie, I don't need a million dollars. I don't need a fine home. I live in a little one bedroom brick apartment. I'm happy as a lord there. You know why? Because my daddy's there with yeah. me. My daddy's there with oh, me wow. every day, all day, and all night long. Yeah. And I, I have such peace in my home. I've had such peace in my home. It's because he's head of my life. There ain't nothing like him. There ain't nothing like him. Let's get back to the word. I had to share that. I, I told um, I told little Donna, my little friend, uh, I said, you know, I said, if I wish to go to church and tell people about I praying for toilet paper, if I was praying for butter, and I was praying for bananas and sales meat, I said, them folks would think I'm crazy. I said, but you know what? That's how much my daddy loves me. You know what? Now, if I ask him for a million dollars, 
He probably say, you know better than that. <laughs> he said, you don't need no million dollars. I give you all you need. Ah. And you know, I don't need no million dollars because praise God, he supplies my needs. Yeah. My God. John 21 and 22 says, hallelujah, let's back up a little bit. This was when uh, they were uh, glory to God. <clears throat> uh, the disciples was uh, after the, I'm going to read more, I'm going to read a little bit of this. They were at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. They were together, Simon Peter, let me give you a swallow of water, y'all be patient. Maybe I clean the up a little bit. Let me get to the Sea of uh, Tiberias, <clears throat> and, um, this, he spoke this to him in the 19th verse. He said, This spake he signified by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto them, Follow me. Oh, yeah. Then Peter, turning around, said the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Praise God. Now I'm going to preach to you. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock. It's still early. Praise God. When Jesus first called Peter, he said, Come follow me. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the preacher coming, man. Glory to God. He said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's called every one of us tonight to come and follow him. Glory to God. But what has happened? Glory to God. following Jesus. But you know what? Doing in 46 years, Brother Allen, probably this one got in the picture. That one got in the picture. And Sister Christina, Brother Raymond one said this this morning. We, we neglect praying. We neglect time in the Word of God. It's easier, Sister Pam, to get on the phone and holler at uh, so-and-so and say, will you pray for me? I need a word from God. Uh, or, will you call, or will you pray for me? I'm, I'm going through something right now. Will you pray for me? I can't seem to pray for myself. Well, you know what the word, what, what the saying is, I got in my house. When it's the hardest, when it seems the hardest to pray, pray harder. Oh, Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. But you know what? When I got saved, Sister Christine, I was raised up in a church. Glory to God that I, I clung to this one and I clung to that one. Glory to God. And we go uh, to each other's house and we get together and we pray and and then we pray for one another, and the Lord would use them for me and me for them, you know. Well, that was good, Brother Abby. And now we're going to emotionalism. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was all about to shout. Oh, God. But you know what? Glory to God, what happened when Monday morning come and the rubber meets the road? Oh. Hallelujah, where's that shout at? Oh. Glory to God, where's them goosebumps? Oh. Glory to God, where, where is your faith? Oh. Glory to God, because you've denied the reading of the word. You've denied to get out on your knees and seek God for yourself. It's easier to call on someone else oh. to do your praying for you. It's easier for someone else to find a scripture for you. You, yeah. rather than you get it for yourself. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory to God. And I tell you what, when the Lord gave me this scripture, he whooped me up one side and down the other. Yeah, he did, Brother Raymond. <laughs> he whooped me up one side and down the other. He said, I called you 46 years 
years ago to come and follow me. Hallelujah. But said you got entangled with this one. You got entangled with that one. Glory to God, you let this one lead you this way. You let that one lead you that way. Glory to God, you could you didn't know me for yourself because you're too busy getting the answer through a third party. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to myself tonight. Hallelujah. I'm like a preacher one time said, I got one finger pointing to you, I got four pointing back at me. Glory to God. But that's how it works. That's how it works. Nobody has a, a, a no one hardly ever are you going to find that has a close personal relationship. Glory to God that they get down and pray through for themselves. If you do, praise God for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God, because it took, it took an act of Congress for, for God to stop me dead in my tracks and say, it ain't going to be that way no more. Uh. Sister Pam, you know what? Hardly nobody ever prays for me anymore. If they do, they don't tell me. I mean, you know, they don't tell me nothing. You know why? Because I don't want to hear it. You know why? Because today for God, I don't even know receive it no way. Uh. If you tell me something, you better know it's God because I'm going to come back to you. God ain't done confirmed it to me, Sister Christine. If he ain't done told me beforehand, I'm going to question it. Because yeah. I've learned through the 46 years of serving God, it's best to get it for yourself. Oh, my God. It's patented when you get it for yourself. Yeah. You get it through a third party, most of the time they tell him they're prophesying to you the thoughts of their own heart. Oh, God. They're prophesying to you what they want you to feel. <laughs> they want to bless you, sister. Yeah. They want to build you up, make you think you called to be some high so-and-so oh, when God called you to sweep the bathrooms oh, and clean the toilets. Yeah. yeah, you know what, Christine, don't you? They'll tell you all this stuff. Oh, you are called to be a mighty prophet of God. Well, your prophet, your work's in the bathroom. Yeah. Prophesy to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been there. I know that. Yeah. So God don't give it to you. It ain't worth having. Oh I know what I ain't, and I ain't coming against people tonight that watch TV preachers either. I can't watch them. I ain't watched the TV preacher, and I couldn't tell you when. Now, we'll watch Jimmy Swagger ever once in a blue moon. But you know what the Spirit told me one day? Y'all think I'm y'all ain't gonna want me to preach no more, because I'm telling you, I am weird. But my daddy made me like this. So y'all blame him for the for the bad stuff that's in me. But one day I was sitting and I was watching TV. And I used to watch all the TV preachers. I got been to some of their meetings, you know, when they'd be in Atlanta or something. One day I was watching TV and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, listen. And I just sit there and I listened. And about that time that preacher told the lie from the pulpit. And when he did, my spirit began to grieve within me. I ain't talking about no down home country preacher, and I'm talking about a big name preacher. Mm -hmm. Told a flat out lie to pulpit. I'll tell you the lie he said. He said, if you believe this, I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona I want to sell you. Now y'all might think that's funny. Mm -hmm. But a man of the cloth ain't supposed to stand behind the sacred desk and tell a lie. Because there ain't no oceanfront property in Arizona. Now, he might have been just using it. Yeah, you'll pacify it all, you know. So he just played it off as a joke. But Brother Rodney, the Holy Spirit, let me know it was a serious matter. And from that point on, the Lord spoke and told me, he said, I don't want you to watch preachers no more. He said, if you need anything from me, you get it out of my word. If you need anything from me, you get it on your knees. God changed me. God changed me. And I can't, you know, I don't, I don't come against people that can get something out of TV preaching or, or evangelist or, or anything like that. But I can't. You know what? Because I'm a peculiar person. 
in my days of peculiar God. And I'm, I'm one of his peculiar children. You know, he has a lot of problems out of me because I'm so peculiar. You know, Sister Maxine, honey, he's probably, she's probably one of his favorites because she's so precious. But I'm one of his problem children. I whine all the time to him. I love to talk to my daddy. I love to tell him my heart. But you know, when Peter, when Peter stumbled so many times, Jesus knew it was going to stumble. Yeah. Jesus knew it, Debbie. Even there, when Jesus was supposed to be crucified, and Peter lied to God, and he told me, he said, I'll never deny you. Yeah. But his flesh was not willing to go through what he knew he would have to, oh, yeah. to stand beside the Father when oh, he was yeah. crucified. Oh, yeah. And none of our flesh would do it either. If they come to you and say, I'm going to crucify you just the same way Jesus was done, your flesh would fight tooth and nail. You would not go through with it because you ain't arrived yet to have that perfect love that would cast out all the fear that you would lay down your life. Peter finally arrived there, though. He said when he was crucified upside down, he said, don't crucify me the same way that my Savior was crucified. I'm not worthy to die the death that he died. He said, you crucified me upside down. He arrived there, but it was through many failures, through many stumblings that he got there. Paul stumbled many times. You know, Brother Raymond had to enlighten me on that because I never saw that before, where that Paul even failed. I had never focused on it. But when the Lord gets ready for you to see it, he'll bring it to your face. Yeah. And he used Brother Raymond to bring it to my face, and I had to get in there and study it out. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I looked at man as a, a Paul as a mighty man that he never done no wrong <laughs> after he was stopped there on the road to Damascus. Yeah. But even Paul failed God at times. Yeah. And we all are going to fail him. We all gonna fail and little sister, you got a mighty touch this morning. Yeah. But you can bet your sweet baby and Satan's gonna be knocking on your door probably oh, before God. in the morning. Oh, but you know what you gotta do? You gotta say, I know my Redeemer oh, lives. Yeah. And I know whose child I am. Oh, Glory to God. I'm gonna share this with you and then I'm gonna shut up. This week, Brother Rodney, I had an experience that I never have felt in my life before. And when I say this, I say it with all sincerity. And I say it because I feel like my daddy trusts me to, to experience certain things that you might think would be crazy. But for the last few weeks, the Lord has put it on my heart to pray for my neighbors. Really pray for my neighbors. And I don't know my neighbors except Tim back there. He's my son. He ain't my neighbor. I claim him as my young one, and I love him just as much as I do my own children. And then my nephew and them live next door, and naturally I love them and pray for them. But the Lord began to deal with me to pray for my neighbors. Yeah. And one day, Brother Rodney, I was sitting in my recliner, and I looked out my window across the railroad track, and I focused my eyes, focused on the house on the corner over there, and and I began to pray. I said, Lord, if it be your will, let my spirit walk through the rooms of that house. And that's deep praying. Yeah. That's deep praying. <clears throat> and you know, he let me do it, Brother Alvin. Because you can have a night of the body experience in Jesus. Yeah. I said, Lord, let me walk through those people's home. Let me walk through their rooms. And let me focus on who lives there that I may know how to pray for them. Yeah. And I pray that for all of my neighbors. I pray not for just my neighbors, but for my community. Yeah. For the city of yeah. Griffin, for the county yeah. of Spalding, for Georgia, yeah. for this nation, for this world. Yeah. Back in the 70s, I don't know why God is bringing this back to my remembrance. But I saw this. And, it, and he's brought it to my mind here recently on several occasions. And I, and I question why God is bringing it to my remembrance. And, 
And I know that it's got to be of God because my memory fails me sometimes. But back when I was a young woman in the Lord, glory to God, Taylor Street, that comes up from um, Jackson, the old, um, we call it, used to call it the old Jackson Road that came up there at the red light at where KFC is. I know y'all know where KFC is. Everybody knows where KFC is. And it used to be the Tiger Lily on the corner right there. This was before the Tiger Lily was there. This was back in the, the 70s or the 80s. In a vision, God showed me orange, the color orange, creeping up Taylor Street. And it was coming in and it was taking over Griffin. And do you know what orange represents? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. God showed me that many years ago and he's brought it back to my mind. <coughs> and the Lord let me know back in the, my early years of being a woman in the Lord that witchcraft was going to take over the city of Griffin. And people, it's about happened if it ain't already happened. And we got to pray against it. We got to pray against it because it's not God's will. You know, God's calling, you know, when I said, stood up last Sunday night and I said that God is calling the, the mighty warriors, the stalwarts to get up from the back line yeah. and get your sword and your shield and get up to the front of the line where you need to be. It's for a reason. Because there's babies in the Lord that are not strong enough to withstand the powers that is coming on this earth. And you know, I told you, that God told me here several months ago that prayer and study is the only thing that's going to keep the children of God in this last day because the, the powers of darkness, the powers of witchcraft is working so hard against the minds of the people, causing the minds of the people to stray. And they'll blame it on Alzheimer's or they'll blame it on dementia or whatever the names of those things are that old folks get or even young folks get it. But it ain't a thing in the world but the attack of the devil that is trying to destroy the minds of God's children. He's already got the sinners. He ain't worried about them. You know, people think I'm crazy. I'm going to share this with you too. A lot of people, you know, that walk, watch these movies, The Walking Dead. My granddaughter told me one day something about it, and I said, I don't watch that. But I said, if you want to know the truth, uh, I said, the, the movie industry ain't doing a thing but trying to show the people in America what's really happening, what's really taking place. Because you see these people walking around as the walking dead, zombies. What does that say to you? They're dead. They're sinners. They're nothing but sinners walking around. They're dead in their sin. They're walking around like zombies. Drugged up on all kind of depression medicine. I ain't going to preach on that because I might touch somebody's uh, medicine cabinet. Oh, uh, you want to find that best in my mother, I tell them, I told that doctor right quick. When they tried to put me on I said, I don't know nothing that's going to alter my mind. I said, if Jesus can't handle my depression, it can't be handled. But the Walking Dead, the movie The Walking Dead, it ain't a thing in the world, but showing the world that there are people that's walking around that ain't born again children of God. They're walking around dead. They're zombies. Yeah. They're dead to the spirit of God. Wow. And, the, and the movie industry is making millions of dollars yeah. off of sinners. Oh, God. And they're exploiting it. Yeah. But it's really sick, sin sick. Oh, yeah. It's really pitiful that we can't wake up and see the state of mind that the sinners are really in. Oh, People don't care. It's all about what you need, what I need, what can I get from God. Amen. You better get an attitude of prayer. You better get an attitude of, of hunger and thirst for God to save your loved ones. This week, Sister Maxine, and I'm going to say this, and I promise to God I'm going to shut up. <laughs> this week, I was, I seen something. 
and I'm a mother, and I'm a grandmother, and I'm a great-grandmother. And when I see something that touches my heart, I usually cry like a baby. And one day this week, something touched my heart. And it grieved me so bad, I was smothering me. It was literally smothering me. And I said, God, what in the world is wrong? I couldn't breathe for crying. I couldn't get my breath for crying. The Lord says, now you know how I felt when I was hanging on the cross. He said, I didn't die from the wounds that was inflicted on me. I didn't die from the, the stripes on my back. I didn't die from the, the slaps on my face and the crown of thorns that they slammed down on my head. I didn't die, Sister Christine, from the nails they put in my hands or in my feet. I died of a broken heart. Amen. And most of you know here recently I had a heart attack. And when the doctor finally found out what it was, the name of it is a Chinese name, and I said, only I could inherit something from the Chinese. <laughs> Takasubu Syndrome. And I said, that's the craziest name I've ever heard, but that's what they said I have, Takasubu Syndrome. You know what it means? A broken heart. And two days this week, I sit and I grieve so bad. And I said, God, I can't bear this. He said, but you can't serve me if you don't know me. Mm -hmm. You don't, you can't know me unless you know what I went through for you. And he said, it wasn't the weight of my body that was pressing down, that was smothering me. Sure, he rose up and caught his breath, but he said it was the weight of the sin that he bore on the cross for each and every one of us. That weight was so heavy, it smothered the life out of him. He was so broken hearted. And you know what? That's my prayer. I want to know everything he went through. I want to walk every step he walked. I want to suffer every stripe on my back he suffered. If not in the flesh, in the spirit realm, okay? I want to know what his heart felt, and I felt it this week for two days. I was so grieved I couldn't hardly function. I couldn't. I was smothering because my heart was so broken. And I said, God, if I die, it won't be from a Takasubu syndrome. I'll die because my heart is broke for your people. Because yeah. people don't care. They're lapsing, they're walking God. Their laps. Non care. Oh, don't let me go there. Lord, I'd be preaching another 30, 45 minutes. But you know what? I'm going to leave this week. But if you don't remember nothing else I said tonight, we've come to the hour because we're in the last hour. I've seen the finish line. I don't know about you, but I've caught a glimpse of the finish line. And I'm pressing toward him. I am persevering with everything there is within me to make it to that finish line. I fought my good fight. I've kept the faith. It might not have been perfect faith, Sister Maxine, but I've kept the faith because I know who my trust is in. I know I've stumbled many times, Christine, and I failed him a lot of times too along the way. He ain't never failed me. But you remember this tonight. In the end, Hallelujah, this, Jesus spoke this to Peter after he done ascended up and appeared. I meant when he come back from the, the, the grave. Hallelujah. And he, was, he appeared unto him. He told Peter, he said, uh, what is it to you how he dies? What is it to you how your brother and sister lives? What is it to you how they pray? How they fast, how they study, how they walk, <laughs> what they profess. You follow me. Yeah. You follow me. Yeah. I can't take you to heaven with me, and neither can you carry me. Because it's hard enough for me to get there on my own. 
But just remember that, Brother Caden. If Jesus said, you follow me. Don't worry about how John's going to die. If he lives till I come again, what is it to you? If that little sister right there, God calls her to be a preacher and a great evangelist, what is it to you? Do what you know to do. Be up and about your father's business. Pray, seek him. Search him out. Hallelujah. Brother Rodney says, I'm a anointed woman of God. Well, you know what? It didn't come overnight. It took years to get where I'm at. And I ain't arrived yet. And I want to arrive till my Jesus comes. Had a preacher, a little minister, a friend of mine one day tell me. He said, uh, you know you can be perfect. I said, not as long as you're on this earth. You can't be. I said, I know what the word says. She said, be you perfect because I was perfect. But I said, Lord, as long as I live in this flesh body, I won't never be able to perfect, be perfect. But you know what, Brother Raymond? You ain't getting to correct me on this one. The Lord told me as plain as day. He said, no, your flesh can't be perfect. He said, your spirit man can. And to be ye perfect as I am perfect, you know what that means? Be mature as I am mature. Grow up. Get off the pacifier. Get off the bottle. Quit waiting for somebody else to feed you. Somebody else to get your prayers answered for you. Hallelujah, because I'll tell you right quick how I am. Don't come to me seeking the word from God, because I'll tell you right quick. You got one, too. I got, I got several. You got the answer from Genesis to Revelations, and I don't say that in a harsh way, because I want everybody to make it in. I want everybody to grow up into mature Christians. And I'll tell you this, because I done told Pastor this when I first come here. And then if it offends you, I'll pray to God it'll cause you to fall on your face before God and to begin to seek Him and, de and begrudge that place that you're in and stir you up to a, a hunger and a thirst but I told Pastor when I first come here, if you don't like me after this, I don't care. Hey, I have to say what my daddy tells me to say. I told Pastor, I said, Pastor, you got a bunch of babies, a very few toddlers, but a bunch of babies. Now, I didn't see that. The Spirit of the Lord showed me that. She says, I know. So you know what that makes us to know? It's time to get some growing in us. And you know what? If I did, you know, and I, I'm talking about Brother Raymond and Brother Abbott and myself that's, uh, and Brother Rodney that's ministers. If I saw toddlers, uh, what does that tell us? Well, we must still be toddlers in the Lord. We have not arrived yet. Right. We have not matured in the place where God wants us to be. So if I feed you, you go tell my daddy on me. Because I love for him to whoop the socks off of me. <laughs> I tell you what, a lot of children don't like whooping this, but when my daddy whoops me, he lets me know he loves me. So he can whoop me 24 hours a day, seven days a week if he wants to. Because I love it. I love him. Stand. And you know, Sister Christine said something earlier. She, she took it out of my mouth. You know, these altars are always open. It don't matter who's preaching, who's singing, who's ministering. If the Spirit is moving on you to hit them altars, don't you sit back and hold back.